So, the next uh, is ranking. What is ranking? Ranking is a comparison between two data sets. So, ranking or scoring it means that you place something in order and this particular you know technique is often used to compare between different households. It could be with respect to finance, it could be with respect to agricultural production, it could be with respect to health, education, many things. So, how actually you do it, the procedures? So, first thing that we need to do is look for key informants or other some you know senior knowledgeable villagers who are ready to take participation in the PRA process. So, those are the people you need to identify. Next, you have to explain and you should be able to convince the participants about your purpose and the objective of the whole exercise before you start it. We need to also tell you know the participants, the villagers that how we are going to conduct the entire exercise and also you know you can tell them that what would be the some of the expected outcomes because that probably will you know help them to get involved with the exercise right from the beginning. Ask the you know villagers to identify and also prepare a list of issues that will be much easier exercise for them. They will definitely you know will be able to uh, identify the issues and also share with, with you. Once they do that then you prepare a matrix of a large uh, sheet of paper like chart paper you can actually put it on left side or right side of the hall or the place that you are actually interacting with the people or you can also have you know some white board or black board if you if you have that otherwise chart paper would be sufficient and then you indicate those issues on top left side of this matrix in the chart paper. Next to get the community's preferences on certain options or alternatives which will actually somehow you know facilitate the comparisons of issues in hand. So, the first issue listed on the left side of the matrix will be compared with all the issues listed on the top and this comparison you can do it through this technique called ranking. So, this process we need to repeat until all the issues that the community or the participant will bring are covered or touched upon alright. Once you do that then it is time for noting down the number of times each problem was mentioned or preferred by the participants. Make a summary of you know all the preferences and rank them accordingly. Encourage the participants to you know get involved in the discussion while this exercise is going on and you as a coordinator of this exercise will slowly start probing or cross checking of the information. So, you need to ask the one information coming from one participants, you can ask them in a very smart way with the other one. Cross check whether that, that uh, ranking that is given for one particular issue by one or two individuals, the others are also agreeing to that. So, this verification is done right at that moment then and there. Give enough time to the you know villagers to discuss, do not rush or rush this exercise. It has to be in a very relaxed uh, environment. That is why if you recall that the first at the very beginning of this uh, PRA topic I mentioned that this is an exercise, very critical exercise for uh, resource management, an efficient resource management you know require a very good PRA exercise and a good PR exercise can only be possible when you give good amount of time, relaxed environment for the people to interact with you and interact among each other. At the end of this exercise, you should briefly discuss, analyze, summarize all the results together with the villagers. It should not be carried out you know inside a room or in a you know inside a lock room away from villagers no. The best way to do it 
is to do it with the villagers in front of them. So, what are the commonly used ranking methods that often you know for PR exercise we use? Number one, preference ranking, second, direct matrix ranking, PR wise ranking, and wealth ranking. So, these are four commonly used ranking methods that we often use for PR exercise. Preference ranking, direct matrix ranking, pair wise ranking and wealth ranking. Now, I will discuss each one of these ranking methods one by one. First, preference ranking. From the name itself, you can easily understand that you will be actually allowing the participants to come out with their preference. Preference among suppose two or more issues or options. So, ranking is determined largely by voting in case of preferential ranking largely. So, the interviewer actually will choose a set of problems or preferences which need to be prioritized, prioritized on the basis of ranking which we call preference ranking. Then the in interviewer asks the interviewee to give his or her favored one in that set in order of priority. Suppose there are three issues that uh, a particular villager says that these are the three important issues that need to be addressed immediately. Among those three, now you will in, you know guide him to prioritize the most important one should be number one, then number two, then number three. The process is repeated with several interviewees. Why? To cross check that the prioritized order of issues to be addressed is actually correct one. Finally, the responses are tabulated on the basis of the preferences. So, this will allow the policy makers or the people who will actually facilitate the implementation of certain programs, certain solutions. So, this ranking if it is correct, the preferences are more or less correct, it will actually lead a better development paradigm, a better way of management of natural resources or any resources that is available within a geographical unit. Next, direct matrix ranking. Direct matrix ranking takes the data gathered from an earlier discussion okay, through various process and then those you know ranking those data information will directly come to a matrix. So, your you know information from a previous exercise will come directly into the matrix of ranking. So, we call them then direct matrix ranking. It is largely very simple, quick and informative and everyone will have a scope to learn from this particular ranking method. What it does? It draws up a matrix with the object across the top and the criteria down the side. I repeat, what it does in direct matrix ranking? It draws up the matrix with the objects across the top and the criteria down the side. So, from this, what actually it helps? The interviewer can ask the farmers or participants to give their individual ranking on the basis of the information that comes directly on the top, across the top and the criteria down the side. So, they have to now give the ranking on the basis of this criteria and also the information that are coming from the previous exercise in the form of some preferences. So, next comes pair wise ranking. This is also another very useful ranking method what it does? You actually compare two solutions or two aspects, two issues in a pair. Pair wise ranking can be various kind of interest like suppose a farmer is there, now he needs to decide that whether he will go for food crops or trees or cereal or pulses, which one. So, that can be compared pair by pair where the participants are asked which is preferred of the compared to and why. So, among that pair, suppose you have two or three pairs, so then there will be a kind of a 
comparison between this. So, the ranking in this case will come pairwise. The reasons of asking this or reasons of having this pairwise ranking because the respondent will reveal the reason for the preferences of you know of different persons or groups to choose why this particular pair in place of the other one. So, the criteria are likely to change between one group to the other. It could be due to gender difference, due to age difference. Okay? So, pairwise ranking will finally allow someone to see that how a particular pair of issues or particular pair of solutions is preferred than the other one. So, the information comes here or ranking comes here pairwise that is we call pairwise ranking. The last one is wealth ranking. Now, here it determines the economic conditions of the household in a village very commonly used ranking process. It shows that how one particular household you know is better off than the other or than his neighbor. It also helps in determining the social and economic status of various household in a village. What it does? It serves a baseline, okay? a baseline of economic condition of a particular area, which gives an opportunity for the policy makers to identify the indicators for planning, implementation, monitoring, evaluation of various development activities in an area. So, I discussed now four different ranking methods, preference ranking, direct matrix ranking, pairwise ranking and wealth ranking. So, we also discussed in detail what are those and how it works. So, wealth ranking it occurs in two step. Okay? Step 1, one should be able to identify the wealth indicators or the differences and features or descriptions of the household in each category or group. Suppose this category could be livelihood wise, suppose agricultural farmer, fisherman community, weaving community. So, among them inside one group you can see the wealth ranking and across the group also you can see the wealth ranking. So, these two things will give two sets of information for policy making. Step 2, categorize the household into rich, average and poor on the basis of you know income. Step 3, take notes of the processes, particularly the difficulties that people or community encountered. We should also note the new learning or knowledge that is taking place while you conduct the wealth ranking exercise. During this exercise itself, you will find that there are various kind of uh, you know deliberation might take place across the group, among one group. So, it is it is actually fascinating to see these you know dynamics during the exercise. So, that also need to be captured. Now, the next tool that I am going to discuss is Venn diagram. So, many of you might be knowing already what is Venn diagram. Venn diagram basically it shows institutions, organizations, group and important individuals found in an area, in a village or any community. As well as the villagers view of their importance in the community. Along with this Venn diagram also explain who participates in this group in terms of gender and wealth. Okay? Now, objectives of Venn diagramming, what actually the purpose or objective of this Venn diagramming? It is to identify external and internal organization, groups, important persons who are active in that particular area or particular community where actually you have gone for carrying out PR exercise. It is to identify who participates in local organization and institution by gender and also by wealth. It also helps to find out that how the different organization and groups relate to each other in terms of contact, cooperation, flow of information and provision of services. So, I think Venn diagram is very, very important when it comes to 
understand the social networking dynamics working between in different groups. So, how actually Venn diagram you should actually you know carry out. So, what are the questions that you would be asking to your participants? First, which organization and institutions or groups are working in your community? They will be able to answer that easily. Second, which institutions or groups do you or means the villagers regard as the most important one? There will be many organizations, right? Which one according to them is most important and why? Third, which groups are addressing household food security and nutrient related issues? Who are actually working together? There will be four or five organizations suppose in an area. Certainly, some will be working in isolation and some will be working as a group that also required to be found find out because this also has an implications for some policy for the development uh, initiatives in a particular area. Are these groups which are meant for women or men only? So, that means are there any group who are dedicatedly for women and dedicatedly for men or they are all groups who are working uh, regardless of gender. That information is also important for carrying out some further exercise. Next tool is structured direct observation. I mentioned that at the you know earlier point that structured direct observation then and there you get the information from your participant. Sometimes what happen is that people idealize this situation that this is the best situation for us or for me and then tell the things which are more of a kind of a description how things should be then, then how things actually are. So, they somehow visualize themselves more into that idealized situation than the actual situation. So, you as a coordinator of the peer exercise need to be aware of this kind of situation. Okay? So, naturally if they are already into imagining themselves into a idealized situations and somehow ignoring the current reality, then the feedback that you will get from the people will be very different and naturally your PRA, PRA report also will be very different and it will be little far away from reality. So, other reasons for this difference is that while you talk with the people about their you know routine activities, a person or individual is only able to give information about some aspects of this activity. Suppose fishing, he will be able to give you only related to the fishing some information, but there could be some other implications associated with the fishing profession. So, it is your responsibility to guide them to provide those information as well. Usually as I said that rural people do not talk much about their routine activities. They largely uh, feel that there is nothing you know fun in that like you know selection of seeds, preparation of seed mixtures, preparation of for that matter you know carrying fertilizers from one place to the other, preparation of land. So, for them they, they just considered it you know just like in a normal activity. But you know that these are critical activities come under the entire production system. So, what happens that is why people in the interview does not give a picture of the reality. Okay? So, they, they sometimes skip some of the activities thinking that those are nothing special to share with someone. So, it is your responsibility again to guide them towards that direction because you need to have the entire picture, you know that even a small activity according to them the small daily regular activity is also a very critical activity towards the larger goal. Direct observation allows also a cross check of findings which you get from the people. It can also be you know used to generate on the spot questions in direct interaction with the farmers and it helps them to explain things in a much better way and much in touch with the uh, reality and you know not in an imaginary situation. So, structured direct observation can be done using these following methods. 
you need to have some indicators, record, have a checklist, you use, use your you know senses and some measurement. These are the methods that often you need to use for direct structure observation. Next comes key informant interview means as I said at the beginning that you need to identify one or two depending upon the total size of people, few key informant. So, depending on the nature and the scope of an issue or inquiry, you need to identify appropriate groups from where you will identify this key informant. That is one of the, uh, you know, key to the success of your PR exercise. Often, you will find that there are some people in the community, they have much deeper knowledge and sense of uh, belongingness, ownerships about their resource community and resources. So, those are the people are potential client for your key informant. For example, the barbers. A barber is well aware of the family size of a household because of his profession and, and all of us we know that we love to you know go visit barber and when he cuts the hair there are a lot of discussions takes place. So, huge amount of information exchange takes place right. So, that actually what happened is also could be a source of information about households and then animal also uh, structure, village structure, village dynamics and different other issues. So, I am not telling that you always identify a barber as your key informant, but I am just giving you an, an example that you have to choose very smartly among the lot that who would be your key informant. Such people for these special knowledge domains are selected as key informant. A key informant you remember is an individual who is willing to talk and has a great depth of knowledge about a specific field. He is suppose from fisherman community, you identify one from agriculture one, from weaving one. So, like that you identify and then the entire information basis that you have collected, you can always sit with this small group of people, you can have a deliberation with them, cross checking, filtering. So, all these exercise why we do? we do it for finer, you know, a better PRA report or PRA exercise outcome. The accuracy of information obtained from key informant depends mainly on developing a suitable interview guide, means how actually you are going to deal with your key informant. It requires some training for the interviewers and especially the selection of the right person as a key informant, that is critical. Then comes the information what you receive from the key informant that needs to be cross checked as I just mentioned through you know either through group discussions or interviews of specific group. So, that also need to be cross checked. So, finally, we, we are here to conclude this PRA topic and I am sure that at the end of this uh, particular uh, topic on participatory pleasure you are now in a position to understand the complexity or the importance of PRA exercise in the development of an efficient you know development plan for an area and especially for a rural area. So, after this entire process is completed for PRA the data gathered will be converted into a report because that report will be a document which will be shared with people. Uh, who are actually going to you know uh, develop a policy for that particular area. A report that has considered, analyzed and evaluated every possible parameters and objectives that gives the best possible outcome solution remedy for the project in questions or the problems in hand or the issues that you are trying to address for a particular area. So, Friends, overall participatory rural appraisal is an exercise which provides opportunities to help a community and area to develop and develop sustainably. Mm -hmm.